Finding yourself the prey in the talons of an owl on a dark night is a gruesome affair. The owl will rip you to pieces or eat you whole. Then it will digest you later to spit up a compacted pellet of what was your fur and bones. Then the owl kicks back, rolls itself a cigarette, and smokes it while listening to the wolves howl. This is the smoking owl. It's summertime again. To be honest, I don't like staying at home during this season. My mom always had been nagging me to go out and look for a summer job, which I really don't like. I've been studying for the whole year. Now I'm going to tire myself to work again for the rest of my vacation. Come to think of it, I heard that my aunt has a wide, beautiful farm. According to dad, Aunt Eliza is really good in taking care of it, thus the fruits of her labor had always been that bountiful. I decided to stay there for a while and chill. The best part of staying at Aunt Eliza's is that I get to see my pretty cousin Mana. She's cute and all, but she only looks at me as a cousin. The eldest, Joanne, treats me like a big bro. It's really cool staying here. The only thing is I really wonder about Aunt's place is that the town is not as populated as the other provinces. I guess you could say people are moving and going to the nearest cities. Living in a province is indeed a tough thing, especially if you're like me, a city guy who enjoys malls and bars, game rooms, and different establishments that are deprived to be seen in a faraway town. Nevertheless, it's a good place. Since you came all the way from Manila, I guess you should try out our new harvested tomatoes. They're really tasty, Uncle Fred said. Aunt Eliza quickly took them out from the basket and washed them, and then placed them well in a plate. As I munched the one, I quickly had the delicious taste of the tomato. It was juicy, and for some reason the taste was intoxicating. Mana and Joanne were laughing at me and I told them as if it was the first time I was eating a fresh tomato. I just smiled and continued eating. Early in the morning, I helped Uncle Fred cleaning the house and tended to the water buffaloes. I kept wondering, why do I feel as though I love helping them more than I do with my own parents? I guess Aunt Eliza is just that kind. I went with her and my cousins to pick out the strawberries, potatoes, and soursop fruits. I thought dad was just exaggerating, but it's really true. It's a whole lot, I told aunt, and just laughed. Mana and Joanne laughed with her, as they know it was some form of compliment for their hard work. Well, you see, the land here is really nutritious. It's as if it's blessed by the heavens. You can see how it is a bit darker than the usual ones. You walk on, right? Aunt replied. Yeah. We don't use too much fertilizers. We don't use sprayers that aren't organic. It ruins the taste of the fruits and crops. I believe you know what I mean. The strawberries around your place aren't as tasty as the ones here, she continued. That I have to agree. I mean... Sometimes the strawberries are sappy, the apples are cotton and such. I guess this is the reason why my aunt's crops aren't the same as the ones commercialized out there. Dad is once a farmer and he himself told me that most farmers are now not always producing organic products anymore. I noticed none of them got blighted, I continued, and helped aunt carry the heavy basket of soursop as we traversed the path to the house. All I can say is that it's a blessing, she replied and smiled at me. It's my fourth day, and when I decided to walk around the town with my own, Mana said she's going to the farm to remove the weeds while Joanne is busy studying for upcoming college entrance exam. As I was walking on the road going to the local market, I saw a few teenagers chatting on a rundown bench. I tried to wave at them and smiled. They smiled back, but I can see that they're wondering who I am. I went near them and tried to make friends. My name is Diego. This is Marina, Linda, Jason, and of course our fat friend Tony, said the oldest as they laughed at their friend. My name's Daniel, 
Daniel Sparks. I replied and started talking to them at the bench. I learned that they were born and raised in the province and that they were chatting about something creepy. Oh, you from the city, so you probably heard of it, Jason told me. About what? I wondered. Well, old people are rare here. We were once featured on the television and radios because this place rarely has old people around. You said you're Tita Eliza's nephew? They still look so young, despite their age. Come to think of it, Jason's right. I never saw much old people around here. I only saw people under their young and middle-aged years. Yeah, which reminds me, where are the old people around? Are they taken to a home of the aged or something? I asked, and roamed my questioning eyes to each of them. And that's what we're chatting before you came. They just disappear, Marina answered. She had a gloomy mood after she said that. Disappeared? You see, they just do. We tried to ask the local police and the town sentries to look for them, but they were unsuccessful. It became a tradition. The old people accepted that they would just disappear and die along the way without getting buried, Diego continued to explain. I just chuckled and shook my head in disbelief. This story they're telling me is ridiculous. I know it's hard to believe, but you can ask the local police for the records, Tony dared me. I was rather unbelieving, but Tony had a very convincing look. I just never had the chance to see a province that would just accept their death as disappearance and such. Weird. I wonder why Aunt Eliza wants to live in this place. I went back with questions in my head. But at least I've got new friends, albeit they are younger than me. Oh, how was your stroll? Aunt Eliza asked. She was washing the dishes as I entered the lounge and joined my cousins and Uncle Fred. I made friends with some teenagers around town, though what they were saying is an unbelievable story, I answered. Unbelievable story? asked Joanne. Well... One of them said that there are no old people around here because they go missing. I noticed most people here are, are young or middle-aged like Aunt Eliza though. Both aunt and uncle looked at each other, my cousins too. After a while, Uncle Fred laughed it out. They just want to scare you. It was a rumor going around, but really, they're buried on the cemetery, that's for sure, he said after. Yeah, just don't mind them. I'm sure they convinced you with their serious faces, Joanne seconded. After that, the idea never got into my head again. It's my last day before going home to the city. Annalisa invited me to the local fair market and the whole family, but I said I'll be here for a few hours and just follow them after. The curiosity got into me. I went to their farm and tried to marvel at the crops. It was just so abundant. I looked at the soil and my aunt was right. I can see that the soil is not abused with any kind of fertilizer that might ruin the taste of the crop. Chicken dung, a few moringa leaves, and compost were the only ones I see mixed into the soil. What's this? Cat hair? I murmured as I noticed there were a few hair strands along the soil I just held. I tried singling it out and I notice that the hair is long for any kind of animal I see in the whole town. I took the lighter in my pocket and started blazing it. A familiar smell entered my system. Human hair. A chill down my spine made me tremble for a moment. But I'm sure this is just my aunt's hair that probably fell down. To convince myself of the case, I tried wandering my eyes but I was rather countered by what I saw. There were more of those hair. I just, I just saw them. It was mixed in the soil. I went back at the house and grabbed a shovel. I went back to the farm and started digging. It was not just some kind of joke. This is reality. 
It was not a deep one, but I saw human bones and wormed flesh. I tried digging on the other parts of the farm, and more, I was convinced that what I thought of is, is happening. The missing people are used as fertilizer. I tried to compose myself and fixed what I dug. I went back at the house and called the local police. Police station? Hello? Hello? I just want to confirm, is it true that you have a long list of missing people here, normally old-aged? I asked. I don't know if the officer noticed my not-so-composed voice. Oh, another journalist. Well, yeah, we've got around 40 already. Who knows, next year it'll be 50. I, I just want to report where you can find those missing people, I said without hesitation. What? Are you serious? What do you mean by that? The officer asked. Curious and based from his tone, he wanted to know quick. Just come. I was not able to continue what I was about to say when Annalisa and the whole family stood on the door looking at me. She was holding a basket of tomatoes. Oh, so you're still here, Daniel. I thought you might like some of our freshly picked tomatoes. We went to the farm just now before you got back here, said Uncle Fred.